This is a short presentation into the Hewlett Packard Project and Portfolio Management System, specifically addressing the project work plan measurement of the earned and planned value metrics. This is the project summary page, uh, which is very configurable, which includes the status or can include the status, um, cost summary information down here with a link to the view of the financial summary, project issues, project risks, project scope changes with individual links to individual elements, um, which can be accessed from this home page. Almost everything related, all of the project artifacts related to this project can are linked someplace um, on this summary page. If you are actually applying um, timesheets to project tracking and those timesheets have to be approved by the project manager, again a configurable element, um, pending timesheets would show up down here. Staffing profile access uh, includes the demand management information, resource planning uh, artifacts that drive the demand management system, uh, view into your project plan relative to major milestones, um, both finished and, um, and upcoming are here. And in this top portlet, these are all uh, called portlets. This is a dashboard, now, pretty standard, very configurable, um, maybe by the PM, maybe by the uh, system admin. This portlet up here is for the work plan uh, or the project schedule for you uh, Microsoft project users out there. Uh, same idea, same functionality. Um, I'll point out here that you have to have a project management license in order to access the work plan. Um, unless you are the project manager of the project. Um, and there are other con um, configuration considerations relative to security uh, that may control or constrain your access to these particular files. Let's take a look. So this is the format um, of the project schedule. There are several views which uh, from this drop down menu you can change. There's an actual view, there's a planning view that has default kind of fields, but in all of these views, and I use the printing view uh, primarily because it allows you to have access to all of the columns, all of the fields of data, and you can move them around. So what I've done is gather all of those related to earned value and planned value so that we can talk about them today. The first field we're going to talk about is the percent complete field, um, which is set, has been set at 30. Um, we have actual hours to date, 75. We've got planned hours, and we'll assume that that's the baseline number at this point. Um, so that looks like it should be 75% complete. Um, we've overridden that because we're testing the synchronization of Microsoft project schedules outside of uh, the Hewlett Packard PPM system in a full synchronization mode to see what the impact is of the manual override on percent complete to earned value and planned value in both systems. So there's a lot of reasons that you might have this kind of situation uh, and we'll talk about as we go through this. Um, basically, it, it, the planned hours of 100 uh, would indicate here that 45 of these hours then weren't part of the plan, uh, which it may be a result of unassigned work or unassigned resources doing work. Um, and that, again, a lot of the configuration of the system, which means that when you get done, you may have 145 hours. It might also indicate that you're in fact uh, that far off on your estimate and so if, if uh, 75 hours represents 30 percent when you get done you're going to have 250 hours in either case this indicates there's a problem with this task that the PM needs to look to uh, and I point out here that all of these metrics and variations are really a comparison of what did you plan was going to happen versus what is really happening and so it's more uh, typically in a, in a less mature organization, and I'm talking about project management maturity here from a process internal controls perspective, um, it's more a measurement of your ability to plan than it is your ability to execute. You may be doing an absolutely fantastic job um, in delivering what you're supposed to be doing. It just wasn't planned very well. Um, and all of that, which is really why you put this kind of a system in, um, is to improve that whole process so that you're better at planning, so you're better at predicting, so that you can optimize your resources. And that's what demand management is all about and what this system is supposed to be for. And so we put in 30% uh, 30 there, and so let's see how that affects our calculations. Our first element is called earned value. It equals the total planned cost, which in this case is $4,200.07, which can be both labor and non-labor. And, it, and it's uh, in the baseline, times our percent complete of 30%, which says um, if we were rolling along um, doing the same number of hours all the time, um, we should have actually consumed already $1,260. 
Um, so that's our earned value. The next element is the cost performance index. This is about an attempt to determine how far we are off from our plan. Um, it is the earned value, $1,260, divided by the actual cost, $2,400, at a 0.53% index, which means we're 40%, 47% ahead of spending, which is not a good thing. Um, but again, it's trying to figure out what that means relative to the rest of the project. Keep in mind these indices in general, um, if they're the closer to one they are, the more on track you are, um, the less, uh, the further away from one, below one they are, um, the bigger your variance and your problems potentially. If you're over one, that would be considered favorable, uh, but, but again, it's very dependent upon your understanding of the content of what was planned to happen and then what is happening uh, before you can determine that. This is just an attempt to um, kind of raise the flag to say here's something you need to look at because it uh, may not be um, um, as you desire. The next element is the cost variance. This is an attempt to monetize that cost performance index and it is the earned value 1260 less the actual cost of $2,400 which means you are $1,139 uh, ahead of your spending curve and that's all that means. The next value is the planned value. Uh, the planned value is a little different. It's not impacted by the percent complete. It's based on the fact that you are assuming a flat profile in cost spending. And so your planned cost uh, is $4,200 for total, and it's multiplied by the number of days you are down the task path divided by the number of work days in the task. And this is based on the regional calendar um, and work days. Um, so your holidays and, and all that stuff would be taken out. Um, so this says we're 10 days down a 12-day work path. And so based on that, we should be at $3,500.06 based on our spending. And again, the assumption is a flat profile. If you plan it that way, um, it actually looks good. You're behind schedule if you also are committing to finish up at $100 and $4,200. Um, but without, again, without knowing the details, um, that's a huge leap of faith. The schedule performance index uh, is an attempt to take that difference in values and variances and determine how far off schedule you are. And so it's going to take the earned value of 1260 divided by the planned value, which we should be at at this point by 3500, and say we're 36 percent or 64 percent behind schedule. Now again, that's an interpretation. It assumes you're you've got the same cost profile every day. Um, and there's a lot of reasons you wouldn't have. If you had non-labor costs in there, you were building a wall, um, and you paid for all the stones for this wall on the first day, then you don't have a flat profile. And so you're going to start out of the box with a negative variance, but your daily rate's going to go down every day, and at the end of the task, you may be exactly on schedule. So there are some scheduling and planning ramifications that would make these <coughs> excuse me, numbers more useful or less useful, um, depending on how it is actually constructed. The last piece is the schedule variance and like the plan, like the cost variance, this is an attempt to monetize um, your variance to see what the cost impact is. It is the earned value um, less the planned value of $3,500, which says we are basically behind spending $2,240. Um, that concludes the um, presentation uh, on project metrics on earned, earned and planned value. Um, these uh, calculations are automatically provided with the tool um, and as I've pointed out are very contingent upon configuration for deployment as well as obviously heavily influenced by your project management methodology and maturity as well as consistency of implementation. Other pres presentations related to this enterprise change management system will be added in the future uh, related to functional system deployment and administration tasks and functions Please provide feedback and any requests and see my website at simplebs.com for many projects and system artifacts for version 6.5 through version 9.1. Uh, many of these, the content for these uh, additional areas have already been developed and are available on that site. Thank you.